Generating probability predictions in Azure ML's automated machine learning is harder than you might think. Let's see what it takes to pull this off. Welcome to this video on Azure Machine Learning. My name is Kevin Fiesel, and I am the proprietor of Catalyxy Services, LLC, a consulting firm which specializes in work all across the data platform space, especially SQL Server. The inspiration for this quick Azure ML video comes from an email exchange that I had a while back. This idea has sat on my backlog for a little bit, so what better time to talk about it than now? Well, maybe three months ago, but oh well. Let's briefly talk about the issue and then we'll check it out in a demo. The question came about from dealing with a classification problem. As a quick reminder, classification is a class of data science problems in which we want to determine based on some set of inputs, some specific label. We have a fixed set of possible values that a label can take, and we refer to these values as classes. In Azure ML's automated machine learning solution, you can easily train a model that returns the class with the highest probability of being correct, given the inputs and conditions of the model. But what if you wanna see those probabilities? Well, it's gonna take a bit of effort. Let's go to the demo and find out exactly how much. Here we are in Postman. I have an auto ML model up and running right now against the Chicago parking tickets data set. In case you're interested in learning more about how I created this, I'll leave a link to the video and the playlist in the description below. I created this auto ML model back in September of 2024, and therefore things aren't too far out of date. Also, in the prior video, I showed you how you can deploy this auto ML model. So now you need to watch multiple videos to be totally caught up. I am pretty insidious that way. Anyhow, in Postman, I have an API test, which is a way for us to call the model without needing to write any code. In this test, we can see an input data JSON object. Inside of input data, we have a list of columns containing all of the columns we use as inputs for our model. Scrolling down a bit, I have an index, which indicates how many data sets I'm sending in for prediction. I've only got one data set for prediction, so my index will be zero. Then for data, I have a list of lists. This gives me one list per input row, and the inputs are the same order as my column names. Below the JSON object, we have a global parameters section. There is no requirement for you to include this global parameters section, but I wanted to show you the default. Inside of global parameters, we have a method attribute, which has the value of predict. If I execute this API call, I get back a JSON array with the value one, indicating that the label for this class will be one, meaning that a person in these circumstances would likely have paid their parking ticket to the city of Chicago, Illinois. What the emailer wanted was the ability to change this method from generating a prediction of the most likely class to indicating what the probability of each outcome is. This is particularly useful in multi-class scenarios so that we can see if there are several likely candidates or one overwhelming candidate. The proper way to do this in Python is to change the predict in this method to predict underscore prob, telling AutoML that we want to predict probabilities. I'll make that change and run the API call again. Unfortunately, our outputs are the same as before, indicating that we are still getting the class output and not actual probabilities. It turns out that life won't be quite so easy for us. Let's switch over to the Azure ML Studio and then to the Azure ML Automated Machine Learning tab in the authoring section. Inside of here, we can see that I have created the Chicago Parking Tickets Auto ML job on September 19th of 2024. It took two and a half hours to complete, so I am not gonna run it again today. If I select the run link, we can get some details on this run, including registered models down on the right-hand side. Because this is not a video on generating auto ML results, I won't dally too long here. Let's select the model link. That takes me to the model page, Chicago Parking T40. Jumping into the artifacts tab, I can drill into the MLflow model folder and then select the ML model file. This shows some information about what we did in AutoML, including that this is a scikit-learn model. 
because this came from Scikit-Learn, a popular Python library for training classical machine learning models, I know that I should be able to generate not only the class predictions that we saw before, but also probability predictions. Now let's jump to the endpoints menu items. Inside of here, I have an endpoint called CS Azure ML hyphen SKDXH. Not a great name, but it's the one I've got. Let's select this real-time endpoint to learn more about it. On the left-hand side, we can see that this is a managed endpoint. If I look at the right-hand side, we have two deployments. Let's ignore that for a moment and instead focus on deployment one, which is the currently active deployment. This deployment scoring script reads auto-generated, which means that AutoML created it for us. It uses the Chicago Parking T40 model and is a bog standard AutoML job. Now that we have a feeling for some of the components involved, let's see how we can solve this problem. To do so, I'm first going to need to go back to the automated ML menu and navigate to the Chicago Parking Tickets AutoML job once more. From here, I can select the Voting Ensemble link on the right-hand side to take me directly to the best-fitting model in this run. By the way, before I click that link and continue, I should note that this is the reason why we weren't able to generate a probability prediction. It's because we've generated an ensemble model. If AutoML decides that a single model is best, you'll be able to use the global parameter setting that we saw in Postman, and it'll work just fine. But because we have an ensemble, we're going to need to do a little bit more work. Anyhow, now it's time for me to click the link and continue. Once we've drilled into the voting ensemble model, I can select the outputs and logs menu. This gives me information about the actual model. What I'm looking for in here is the outputs folder. Drilling in, we have three scoring files. One is for Power BI, one is a scoring file 1.0, and the other is a scoring file 2.0. Let's select that last scoring file. Now this is a classic Azure ML scoring file. It's similar to the one that we've created when we built a code first Azure ML solution. And there are several videos for that process. So maybe just watch the entire playlist and you'll be up to speed on the latest happenings here in the Chicago Parking Tickets cinematic universe. Scrolling down to line 37, we see on the screen the two functions that any scoring file needs, an init function and a run function. What is interesting here is that there is a section in the run function that checks if global parameters is set to predict Praba, which is exactly what we want. This particular scoring file does what we need, yet it seems that Azure ML does not make use of it. But we can. If I hover over the file name, I can see an ellipsis. Selecting that, I'm able to download the file. I've done this in the past, so I don't need to download it again. Also, there's no need for me to modify this scoring script as it does already exactly what I need it to do. Instead, let's switch back to the endpoints menu and select our auto ML endpoint once more. Each endpoint has one or more deployments serving content. The deployment, as we saw, includes a scoring script. Therefore, if I want to use a new scoring script, I need to create a new deployment. Let me show you how to do that. I'll select the Add Deployment button. My first step is to select a model. Let's choose the Chicago Parking T40 model as there's no problem with it. After I choose the Select button, I can select how many compute VMs I want to stand up for hosting the API endpoint. I can also give the deployment a name. I already have a deployment ending in hyphen one, so I would need to change the name if I wanted to deploy this. Before I do that, however, I will instead select the More Options link. Now I have a separate deployment menu. I'll jump past the endpoint and model pages, and this will take me to deployment. Once again, it defaults to a minus one deployment name, so let's change that to minus two. I can keep the rest of the defaults the same and select next. Here I'm on the code and environment tab. I'll need to tick the customize environment and scoring script radio button, and this will give me the ability to use a scoring script for inference. Selecting the Browse button will bring me to a file picker, and I can choose the scoring file I downloaded. I would also need to select an environment. I'll use the default curated environment for AutoML inference. To do so, let me select the environment type as Container Registry Image, and then I'll put in the link for the AutoML curated environment. From there, I can fill in the rest of the details around compute and traffic, and then generate the new deployment. 
Creating this will take a bit of time, but it should complete successfully and will leave you with two deployments. But if you'll recall, I already have two deployments, so I'm just gonna cancel to back out of this. Scrolling down just a bit, I have the Chicago Parking Tickets 40-4, which uses my scoring file instead of the auto ML generated file. I've already pushed out this deployment, so the last thing we need to do is update our traffic to use it rather than the default deployment. To do so, I'll select the Update Traffic link. Right now, I have 100% of my traffic going to the initial deployment and 0% to my alternative deployment. I'll instead push the slider all the way to the right for the new deployment, ensuring that it gets 100% of the traffic. Then I'll select Update. This will take a few moments, but soon it will redeploy the endpoint and we'll be able to use the new deployment instead of the old. While it's deploying, let's go back to Postman. Back in Postman, I'm going to run this API call again. This time around, we get an error saying that we need an input parameter. This is a difference in the code between the AutoML generated scoring script and the one we are using here. AutoML expects an input object called input data, but our scoring script requires an object called inputs. Now you could change the uploaded scoring script to match this name, but it turns out the structure for our call has changed a bit as well. Let me switch over to a working example of a call. Here we have the object called inputs, rather than input data. Inside of this, we still have a list of column names. Below that list of column names, we still have an index. So those haven't changed. But what has changed is the data section. Instead of a list of lists, we now have a list of JSON objects. And each JSON object needs an attribute name and a value. This may feel a bit wasteful compared to the original example, as you need to include the column names for each record as well as a list of column names at the top. But it's actually not a big deal to include these, so I'm not gonna complain too much. I also decided to add a few different examples just to show you that you can pass in a batch of inputs. We have here five separate records, and if I select the send button, we get back an array of results, a single one followed by four zeros. At the bottom of my body, we see the global parameters object has the attribute method set to predict. Let me now switch to the third API test. In this situation, everything is the same as the prior one, except for the bottom line. Now my method is predict underscore proba. And when I run the test, I get back a results list. The prior results list was a simple list of class labels, ones and zeros. Now, however, I get back an array for each data point. This array includes the probability that the record is class zero, followed by the probability that it is a class one. We can see for our first scenario, the model isn't very confident in its assertion that one is the proper class. As I scroll down, we see several examples in which the model is quite confident that zero is the proper class. Now, take these probabilities with a grain of salt. You're going to need to do thorough testing to see if the stated probabilities here actually line up with reality. In other words, when the model says that the class is zero with 80% probability, find all of the records in which the probability estimates are somewhere in that range and see if 80% of them actually are class zero. As you do this for each range, you'll get an idea of how internally consistent the model is with your new data. If for each range, you get approximately the results that the probabilities indicate, you have a well-honed model and have a much better reason to trust those probabilities. But to be fair, that's gonna be a topic for a different day. There you have it. It turns out that it is possible to generate probability predictions for each class in a classification problem. And it's actually quite easy to do so once you know what to look for. We'll have links and show notes in the description below. And until we see each other in the next video, take care.